rivers and streams are like a lifeline to the jungle trekker because you know not only do they give you water, which is your key survival priority in uh, you know the jungle, but you know also they offer the path of least resistance through the jungle itself. And more often than not, you'll find that trails tend to um, follow parallel to streams and rivers, but they often crisscross them as well. The other thing about rivers and streams, you know, if you get lost in the jungle, is that you know it's, it's your best chance in a way of finding your way out is to follow a river downstream and you know hopefully you'll hit civilization. But although you know rivers and streams can be such a great ally in the jungle, they can also be you know a, a potentially life-threatening hazard. And a number of people who you know, go jungle trekking, you know, get into difficulties with stream crossings or with river crossings. And that's really what I wanted to cover today, just some sort of basic tips on how to do it that you know I've learned more or less the hard way. Because trails follow rivers and tend to crisscross, uh, you know, you do a lot of river crossing in the jungle. And that's where you're going to have the most common problem, which I call dry stop problem. Because, you know, you get up in the morning, you have to cross the river, and you think, oh, my socks are nice and dry, you know, I'll leapfrog across on these stones. And generally, that's not a good idea because, you know, these stones are super slippy. And if you fall, you're going to, you know, it's, you're just going to whack your head on a boulder. It's not going to be nice at all. The other problem that people encounter is they think, well, I just take my boots off, take my socks off, put them on on the other side of the stream. Again, that's not really a good idea because your feet, when they, you know, they hit these stones on the riverbed, you know, it's going like, to knock you off balance. So the best thing to do is keep your boots on, get used to the fact that, you know, in the jungle, things get wet. So when crossing like small streams, you know, and, you know things, that, streams that you can wade through, and I, mean, I would say anything up to about your thigh, you, know, you can wade through very easily. Uh, you know, my advice is keep your, keep your boots on, keep your socks on, never mind that they get wet. But you know, I mean, talking about boots, I mean, this comes back to sort of a, a problem I've wrestled with a lot, which is what are the best shoes to wear in the jungle? And you know, the truth is, I, I, I don't think there are, you know, I don't think they exist. And the, the reason is simple because. You know, what has good grip um, on mud, you know, which, which are shoes like these, these are the Campo Adidas, you know, that most of the Orang Asli round here actually wear, because here it's quite, you know, mountainous, there's a lot of sort of climbing up slopes. These don't have uh, as good grip on wet stones as these. So, you know, when, you, when, I, when I've been to areas where, you know, it's more sort of people that are working more around rivers, you know, the Orang Asli tend to be using this shoe. Here, they tend to be using this shoe. So, you know, I mean, there just isn't really a you know, perfect answer. In terms of what, uh, you know, a lot of people wear, I mean, the, the Panama sole, you know, is, is okay, but, you know, the grip isn't brilliant on wet rocks, and, you know, you need to be aware of that. But one to absolutely avoid, in my opinion, you know, are Vibrand soles. I mean, these are just rubbish on, you know, wet, um, smooth surfaces. They've just got no grip whatsoever, and, you know, I wouldn't wear them in the jungle personally. So with a bit of care, crossing like knee-high streams really shouldn't be a problem. But you know, one thing that happens a lot in the jungle, and it's happened to me a number of times, is that you know you go in on a trail, you cross a river, it's like knee-high, no problem. You camp the night, the rain comes down. The next morning, you go back to cross that river, and it's like a raging torrent, you know, waist-deep uh, water, you know, and you've got a, a real problem. So what do you do? And the key thing here is to stop, use the stop rule. Stop, think, observe, and plan. Because you, know, you don't want to rush it, you, know, you, you don't want to drown just because you didn't think it through. And you know, I could talk about like, lots of different situations you're gonna come across, but you know, there, there's so many variables involved that you know, really the best thing to do is, as I say, use that stop rule. Maybe it's a good time to have a brew up as you, you know, consider your options. And particularly, you know, you want to think about what you're going to do if things go wrong and you get swept away. You know, where are you going to end up? You know, if you have to ditch your pack, you know, have you got like your Parang Whistle survival kit on you? You know, just go through the options and take your time. But if, you know, you can try going in and see, you know, it's going to depend on the speed of the water, whether you can still wade across. But obviously, you know, you're going to be knee, if it's, you know, up to sort of waist level, you're going to be, uh, need to be more careful about how you do it. And you know, the, the best way is to use what's you know, the side shuffle approach to crossing a river. I'll just show you that quickly now. So if you're wading through a deep river, I mean, before you get in, a couple of things to think about. 
One, you may need to ditch your pack. You know, it may get bogged, bogged down with water, it may get snagged on something, you may need to ditch it. So generally, you want to make it easy to ditch in that eventuality. So, you know, undo the waist belt, undo the, you know, this one, the chest uh, belt, and that way it's just held on the straps and it's pretty easy to ditch it if you need to. Now, you know, some people, and in fact I used to, just carry the rucksack on one shoulder like that, which makes, of course makes it even easier to ditch. But the problem doing it that way is the, you're not so balanced because the rucksack is, you know, is at an angle. So, you know, you're slightly off balance to start with. And also, you know, should it slip off your shoulder while you're crossing the river, you know, it's going to give you all sorts of problems, you know, getting it back on. Again, it's going to unbalance you. So, you know, for me at least, uh, you know, I find the easiest way is just to have both straps, not, not too tight, and, you know, cross that way. Um, another thing just to bear in mind that I found, particularly with sort of baggy trousers like, you know, the ones I use, is that you know, you're going to get a high drag coefficient. You know, the, the, you, know you can actually feel, you know, getting the drag caused by the trousers. So, you know, you may want to take them off. Now, I wear cycling shorts underneath. I accept it's not a pretty sight, but, you know, it's just going to mean I'm going to get less sort of drag from the river. Uh, you know, I can take the trousers off, put them in my rucksack, cross that way. Okay, so one thing that's going to make a huge difference when, uh, you know, you're crossing a river. Imagine the river's flowing towards me and he's across from here to here. Um, let me put this here in the beginning. Um, is to use uh, poles to help you get across. Now, the, what you want to do is, I want to be facing uh, the, the direction the river's coming towards me. So, and I'm just going to shuffle across like this. Okay? And, and the idea is that you've always, basically with this foot, I'm going to be looking for a, you know, a good foothold, you know, looking for obstacles in the river. Once that foot's secure, I can place that down, get a sort of tripod arrangement, and move my other foot across. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. Now, <clears throat> some people like to use two sticks, okay, and, and, and that's fine. The problem I find is if the water's uh, going you know, quite fast, as you lift this stick up, it's, it's going to be you know, pulled back uh, by the river, you know, and you know, I've got to use your wrist to move it. It can just be a little bit awkward. Personally, I, you know, I prefer to use one stick, leaning you know, into the river slightly, um, and, and do it that way. You know, it's personal preference. I mean, the maybe the best thing to do, if you're not sure, start with two sticks. If you find it too difficult, just dump one of the sticks, uh, you know, and switch to, to one stick. But, you know, what you have to remember is you can't see where you're putting your foot. So here we've got a dog bowl. You know, what basically what's going to happen is I'm going to, I'm going to feel that with my foot and then move to somewhere where I've got a better purchase, you know. Uh, and that's really it. And basically you're going to shuffle across the stream uh, with two points of contact at, at any point and, and don't rush and, and really that's it so you know with um, yeah you can test it you, you go in if you get halfway across it whoa this is way too hairy and it's deeper over there you know go back to the shore and think again you know, go up river or down river and look for a better place to cross but what I wanted to cover next is is the most common way of crossing you know difficult rivers in the jungle and one that, you know, honestly makes my heart sink because, um, because basically my balance isn't particularly good and I'm scared of heights. And, you know, what I'm talking about is using uh, fallen trees to, you know, cross rivers. And there are two, way, you know, two instances where this is done. One, you know, there's a tree that's naturally fallen across the river and people use that and the trail, you know, has gone to where that tree is. Uh, or alternatively, you know, people just cut down a tree, you know, in such a way that it will fall across the river. If you're thinking about cutting down a tree, you know, and I've, I've done this, uh, you know, in, in a situation where we had to do it, uh, be aware of the fact that it's a lot of work to do that with a parang. So not the best option, but if you have to do it, you have to do it. So if you're going to be using like a, you know, a fallen tree like this to cross a river, you know, a few things that I've kind of learned, uh, you know, as somebody who's not very good at doing it. One, I mean, this is incredibly slippy and slimy, this uh, tree trunk. Which is going to be pretty much the case in the jungle anyway. Um, a few things. One, you know, you're going to find that a rucksack is going to unbalance you because it's raising your centre of gravity. And that's where, you know, lumber packs are good because they lower, you know, your, your centre of, center of gravity. Um, the, the footwear you're using is going to make an enormous difference. I mean, on a wet log like this with vibrant soles, you know, you just wouldn't get any purchase at all. Uh, you know, in terms of the sort of vertigo, which, I mean, I suffer from, 
you know, the way I found of getting around that is to, you know, rather than thinking, oh my God, if I fall off, that's it. I think, oh, if I fall off, you know, what's my plan? You know, am I going to die? If I'm going to die, I'm sorry, I am not crossing that log. But, you know, if I look at it, I think, yeah, okay, I'm going to get swept downstream, get a few bumps and bruises, but I should be okay. That, in a way, kind of relieves that sort of fear. Um, you know, what else? I mean, if uh, you're in a group and there's somebody there who's got very good natural balance, you know, you can maybe persuade them to take the rucksacks of people like me who are not very good at it across for them, you know, because, you know, some people really do have it, you know, extraordinary balance. Now, you know, in terms of uh, how to do it, you want to be looking ahead, not down at your feet. Um, you know, and walk across reasonably confidently, and uh, you know that that's it. Keep your legs slightly bent. Um, you know, and it can be done. But and here's the thing. You know, <laughs> if you can't do it or you're too worried about doing it, you know, it's time to ditch the dignity. And you know what you do is you just straddle the you know the the trunk like that and just push yourself, bump yourself across on your backside. You know, hey, better than falling in the river. Okay, I'm not going to cover road crossings uh, you know, in this video. Maybe we'll do it another time when I've got some friends around and we can sh you know, show you some of the options. But one thing I think is worth learning, yeah, everyone you should learn, is how to tie the bow in one-handed. Because if you get into difficulties and somebody throws you a rope, and imagine you know, the, the current of the river is you know, um, coming towards me, uh, you know, how do you tie yourself on? Because I can grab the rope with one hand, now I want to tie myself on. And what, what you do basically, I'm going to wrap the, the rope around that hand. Um, so, you know, it's basically uh, taking my weight, I've got one hand free, and now I'm going to pull myself with my left hand. With the, my right hand, I'm going to take the working end, and I'm going to form this bow in, like so, and then lift it up under my arms, and that is going to <laughs> slip down. down. And that can take my weight. So, you know, that's a, that's a useful knot to know how to tie it one handed, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so to tie it one handed, uh, you know, this is the rope my rescuers are hanging onto the other end of. I take the working end, and I'm going to take it over, twist it under like that, and that basically forms the loop. And now, with my fingers, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> send it under that one there, and then you have to sort of wiggle your hand through. And to do that, to, to wiggle your hand through, you've got to uh, remove the tension, you know, using your left hand to pull yourself forward, you know, and that, that's basically your bowling. <laughs>